Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for sticking in there. I'm trying to release content as quickly as possible. Thanks to you guys, uh, particularly two people on the WoW forums. This video is going to be centered around Kagthul, I believe his name, on the WoW forums. Basically straight up said, I wasn't getting 1802 overclock, and I he linked something that I watched from Gamers Nexus. And I'm thinking to myself, he's probably right. And I posted that I was able to get that. I don't know if I did that in a video or not, but let's find out if Gamers Nexus, well, I mean, they did their testing and I believe them, but I did my testing. Let's find out actually how far I can overclock Vega and when the numbers actually stop mattering. So I can take this thing all the way to 2000 megahertz. It won't give me a driver error, but will I get any kind of performance? So thank you very much for letting me know about that. Granted, you challenged me, which is fine, because if I put out inaccurate information, let me know. I'll see if I can fix it. Uh, next up on the shopping block is another gentleman on the WoW forums. He does have a YouTube channel. I'll link in this next video. Basically told me that the Ryzen coolers are nowhere near as good as the Hyper 212 Evo. Now, for my initial testing, I had a lot of problems with those coolers. Now that Ryzen's been out and bugs been fixed, we will find out about that in a different video of a bracket coming. Thank you as well for pointing that out for me. So without further ado, let's take a look and see just how far Vega 64 can really overclock. So nothing super fancy. This is my rig that I use for everything from gaming to editing. Ryzen 7 1700 at 3.9 gigahertz. I had up the voltage 1.425 uh, voltage on the core because I wasn't quite stable. I did have a couple times I lost the display. Uh, 1.2 volts SOC, then my H100i, my ASRock board, 32 gigabytes of RAM at 2400 megahertz, my new 850 watt power supply, my case with a bunch of RGB LED fans, so the SP120s, and the uh, program, um, 3D Mark Time Spy was running off the external SSD. Well, I just have it plugged in via SATA. So that is what we're using today, and let's find out how far we can push Vega until we actually get false numbers. So we're gonna have to look at these charts from the bottom up because they scale obviously up as you get faster. So first things first, balanced, which is running about 1536 megahertz on the core, 945 megahertz on the memory. And as you guys see, just shy of 48 and a half FPS and just over 37 and a half FPS for graphics test two versus graphics test one. Now, then we run turbo mode, which does peak around 1630 on the core, the same exact memory. It gained mostly in the second graphics test. The first graphics test, it really didn't make much of a difference. Now, where the difference comes in is running a custom, leaving everything the same, but adding 50% power and 1.2 volts. That pushed us quite a bit up in reference to the other ones, roughly almost two FPS on both from the balanced. And then we went up to 1000 megahertz and 1050 megahertz on the memory with small incremental increases. So that's what we did with the memory. Now we're gonna start messing with the core clock. Now this test is a little bit different. The bottom three are the same as the previous test, balanced turbo and adding 50% power at 1.2 volts. The top three still have the 1050 megahertz memory, but we also added some core overclocking. So comparing from base, because this is the full overclock now, we're up to around 51, just over 51 half FPS, but we topped out at 1677 megahertz. As you can see, we ran almost identical past that. So that was our ceiling, 1677 megahertz on the core and memory actually crashed at a thousand, above a thousand fifty. I went straight to 1100. So that's kind of where it topped out. Let's look at all the benchmarks of one chart so you guys can see how this flow looked like. So we see a little bit of gains the whole way up. Obviously the biggest gains going from turbo mode to adding 50% power at one, two volts. Now, the gains drop off at the third from the top, the 1677 megahertz on the core, 1050 megahertz memory on, on the memory with plus 50% 50 power, 1.2 volts. Now, literally going all the way up 100 megahertz on the core lost us 0.01 FPS 
on graphics test 2, and we gain 0 0.02 FPS on graphics test 1. <laughs> that is what we call margin of error, my friends. We gained nothing. Now, one thing to note is once we added plus 50% power, 1.2 volts, it seemed to make the megahertz on the core much more stable. So when you look at 1630 to 1632, you see a, a, that's where you see the jump. And the reason why is on turbo, it was bounced between 1536 and 1630, whereas 1536 was pretty much staying there and dropping even down to like 1401. Whereas when you add the 50% power at 1.2 volts, it stays at 1632. So that's where the difference was. And then it kind of, went up a little bit adding some additional overclock but we definitely found a ceiling let's just quickly look at the actual scores and then we'll wrap this up and this chart represents the graphic scores obviously again the biggest jump was going from turbo to adding more power because it adds more stable power with almost no drops below 1632 megahertz and then adding some memory overclock seemed to give it a lot more versus actual core overclock as you see literally 45 megahertz you saw a small jump and we literally stayed 7, 7439 7439 and 7440 going up basically 50 megahertz at a time did not help at all so the ceiling for my car at 1677 megahertz 1050 on the memory with 50 percent additional power 1.2 volts i'm just going to leave it honestly probably on turbo mode for most of what I do because I don't want the extra power. I mean, literally 150 more watts for that little bit of performance is not worth it to me. So I'm just gonna leave it right where it's at. So that's the result. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. So I'm thinking I shouldn't let the wifey like see this video. I mean, if she happens to watch it, I can't stop her, but I'm not really gonna push her to actually watch it because that would entail me admitting I was wrong, which is not something I ever do. I'm always right. The catchphrase is, Feeban's always right. But in this case, I kind of just got really excited and saw really high megahertz without realizing that my overclocking wasn't really doing much over what the base turbo really had to offer. So thank you, Keg Thole, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, for pointing this out so I could fix it and find out, you know, from my own testing, as I love to do, that I wasn't achieving what I really thought. What's coming down the pipeline? We got three things. Next in the block is my $1,300 editing ring. I'll probably just do a more of a professional build log, something shorter, something that, um, you know, might be a little more useful. Um, we have the AM4 bracket coming for the Hyper 212. Uh, we're going to do some testing to see if what I said in my video is true. That, you know, if you're going to spend 30 bucks, if you're not really going to get much more performance, if any at all, we're going to find out that's true. And my very first review sample from a manufacturer is coming. I don't know how soon, but I was approved the other day. I just sent them my information. I'm getting the product sent to me. I have to do a review. There's certain guidelines, like I have to make it so long, but they're not you know, paying me for a review. Um, and it's my very first product I get to review from a manufacturer. So I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is, but I'm really, really excited to bring it to you just because I haven't had a manufacturer give me a product yet. It's always been something I've bought. So that's coming soon. If you guys like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, that's fine dislike it that lets me know what you guys think about it subscribe if you're not in the section below you can see where to purchase the test system that i use from amazon that does help me out a lot and in discussion below the discussion below let's talk about all the rumors and things circulating around rx vega becoming more expensive by retailers amd or a little bit of both Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Steve from PC Butter Solutions, and as always, I'll see you guys later on down the road.